exactly is not working right. Because it's easy just to throw our hands up in the air and say, ah, you know, it's just a mess. That kid can't do, um, ah, no video. Hello. Um, you know, that kid can't do anything right. Or, you know, this, he's such a hot mess or I'm a hot mess. The whole class is a hot mess, something like that. And it's better as teachers if we act as problem solvers to look at, you know, if there's a ton of things that are not working well, pick the one that is the most um, interruptive, right? Or the one that is the most, you know, causing the most trouble. And then to say to ourselves, what can we do to make this better? And there's lots of ways to do it. We've talked about it in a number of other videos about how we have to model what we want from our students, how we practice those routines, how um, I've showed you it in other videos about how we use visual cues. Um, but what I am um, going to share with you now is specific things that we've created and that, of course they look prettier today than they did 12 years ago. 12 years ago I had ugly clip art and I would just take pictures and you know it was a hot mess. And now I've got some really, of course, adorable clip art and things that we use in our classroom to support students uh, who just need a little bit of extra help. Are you guys, I've got, yes, how can we solve this problem for sure. Um, I've got some people who obviously can hear me and then other people are not sure about video or sound. So if you can hear, let me know. Um, hopefully it works so I don't have to redo the video. Okay, so before I share with you some of the strategies that I'm gonna use, I wanna think about um, a three-year-old. And we've talked about this before about how, you know, we have to really think of their development. The other thing I wanna think about is most students who are three have, if they have, you know, difficulties, have not been diagnosed with anything. And so the chance, if you have a classroom of even five or 10 students, of you having some student who has some type of a special need, even if it's an undiagnosed special need, it's pretty high. Um, because at age three, a lot of times if um, they're on the spectrum for autism or some other kind of pervasive de developmental disorder, they've got some ADHD, if they've got learning disabilities, those things are not diagnosed at age three. And so um, every one of us has students with special needs in our classroom, undiagnosed or diagnosed. Or maybe they don't actually have a special need, but they're just really struggling with a certain part of the room. And so I'm gonna share, I think, I think I have five pulled out, five different strategies that we use in our classroom um, to really support students so that every kid in our class can be successful. Everybody can achieve, um, you know, work to their fullest potential and really feel like they've had a great day. Okay, the first one is right here over my shoulder. Sorry, it's hard when I'm the correct way. And that is we have this visual schedule posted. And um, during at the very beginning of the year, we'll really look at and we'll say, you know, first, I can't do that. You know, first when we get here, we've got to do our morning work. And then we do circle time and then move to centers. Uh, and most of our students, you know, if they need to check you know, when is it gonna be recess time or whatever, they'll run over and say, oh yeah, after we clean up, we go to recess. Um, if you have students who are still really struggling with what's next, what's next, um, use a clothespin. I just taped a star to it and you can just clip it right onto the schedule card. So, um, you know, if, if the kid is always like, what a snack, what a snack, then what I might do is just clip this right onto the centers and say, well, when we're done with centers, we'll go to the bathroom and then we have snack. So having this posted in the classroom someplace is really helpful for those kids who are just like, oh, what's next, you know? You do not have to move this all day every day. That would be exhausting, right? But only use it as necessary. And that's the same with all of the strategies that I'm gonna share with you today. Um, it would be ridiculous to use every single strategy with every single student every single day. It's just not necessary. For the most part, let's give our kids the benefit of the doubt and say they can function and you know get through the day, you know, given this, the setup that we have um, in our classroom. And then take the things that are not working and try to address those through visual cues. Okay, so yes, it's really good for twos. Twos, they're like a special need of their own just because of their lack of verbal skills, right? Two-year-olds, they're just trying to figure things out. So. Um, Definitely anything that works for an older student with special needs would work for a younger student without special needs. Okay, and then I know that a lot of you ask about how I run my centers, and you ask, you know, like, are they allowed to move around, or do you time them, or do they have to go to every single center? And I firmly believe that our students, we have to give them the benefit of the doubt. We have to say they are capable of making decisions, of engaging in play for as long as they want to, or as short as they want to, and then, 
finishing their whatever they're working on and moving on to the next group. Some of our students really struggle with those executive functioning skills like the I'm thinking of a plan. First, I'm going to go to dramatic play. And then when I'm done with dramatic play, I'm going to move to the block center and I'm going to build something. And some of our students really struggle with that, right? They're like, oh, too many choices. You know, they either bounce around the room like two seconds here, three seconds there, five minutes here. Um, and other students can't pick something to do. They've got the opposite problem. We call those the wanderers, right? Where they just kind of like wander around the room without a plan. Um, and so the strategy that I'm using with those students, again, is not right for every student. Not every student needs to have this visual, you know, plan. Some students, most students can just make a plan. All right, here we are at school. There's a great thing set up in dramatic play. I'm gonna go play sandwich shop. And then when I'm done playing a sandwich shop, I've chatted with my friend and we've decided we're gonna go paint a picture at the art easel of our sandwich. And then we paint the picture and hang it up to dry. And then I say to her, what would you like to do next? And she says, let's go read a book. So go over to, you know, most kids can do that. And so we're not gonna use these strategies. We're not gonna overuse them. You know, we're just gonna use them for the kids that really struggle. The kids who are beep, 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 all over the place and can't engage in play. Or the kids who play one thing and then run because then they don't know what to do next. Or the wanders who just kind of roam around, not really sure. And so this is the strategy that I use with them. So this is just a little half sheet of paper. I put it on foam um, because that's a good way of reinforcing it. And I just tied it at the top my plan. And then I have these little pieces of clip art. Um, and like I said, when I used to do this in 2005, before there was cute clip art, it was just ugly little pictures. But these are cute. Thank you, Whimsy Clips, for these cute clips. Um, and then the kids will just pick before center start. You know, I pull the kid who I know needs help with this like thought process and just say, let's make a plan for your day. What are you going to play first? And, you know, I usually, on the back, I have just a big strip like this industrial, it's hard to see because it's black and black, industrial Velcro. And I usually pick out a few options, you know, good things that we have set up. And I'll just, you know, take a minute when everybody else has started playing at centers and say, what do you want to do first? And the kid might say, let's see, first I want to build in the block center. And then I'm going to go write a letter to my mom. And then I'm going to go play in the sense, you know, then they can make a plan. You could do it. I, this one has five. You could do it where they make their plan for all five at the beginning and then just kind of check it off and they can carry it with them. You know, it's pretty sturdy, um, you know, kind of check it off. Oh, I finished my blocks. And then I might see the kids start running and be like, oh, grab your plan. Let's see. After you finish doing whatever you're doing in the blocks, what are you going to do next? Oh, that's right. I was going to go write my mom a letter in the writing center. Like, Super. Come on over. I'll show you where that is. And then they finish it and then you run or or they'll run to the plan after you've taught them how to use this and say, oh, that's right, after I'm done with writing, then I'm gonna go over to the sensory table. And so um, this is a really great way to engage kids who have a hard time planning what they're gonna do or given that freedom, um, can't use their time well, right? We do not limit the number of kids at our centers because I've got a very tiny class and a humongous classroom. So we do not need to, but if you need to, then you do what needs, you know, you do what needs to work or what works for you, what you need to do for your own classroom. Um, I'm very flexible with this. So after he's finished writing or she's finished writing and something awesome is happening over in dramatic play and then they're kind of like, oh, I had planned to go to sensory, but all my friends are in dramatic play. Then we just change it. Like, oh, I, I'm gonna change my plan. I'm not going to do sensory table. Instead, I have decided I'm going to do dramatic play. And I'm like, that's terrific because those are the executive functioning skills that we use all day long as adults and what most of our kids use too, right? We can change our plans. Um, and the goal, of course, is to work themselves out of the need for this so that they can start to plan it without the pictures, right? When we get started and I'm like, all right, it's time for centers. You know, this is a really great one to start with. Miss Jamie's got this awesome sandwich shop set up in the dramatic play. Um, that they could do that and join in with the other kids and say, all right, after we've done all of our sandwiches and we've played here, let's talk to each other and say, would you like to go over with me and look at the science center? Like, okay, that's the goal. The goal is not to use this the whole year. The goal is to use this to support them in being able to make those plans and decisions on their own in time, right? So this is just a support system. It's not, it's not a, this is not the end game. Right? The end game is that they can make plans, carry them out, and re readjust the plans throughout the day. 
This is a support to get them there. Um, I do have an inclusive setup, not intentionally, um, but I've always had students with special needs since the very beginning. We've had students with speech apraxia. I've had students who don't speak English. I've had students um, with um, autism, Asperger's, ADHD, Down syndrome. Um, we've just always welcomed everybody. Um, and so we just try to meet the needs of each student. And this seems to work pretty well for the kids who have a hard time, um, you know, picking something to do. Yes, it's okay if they just go and play with their plan. Yes. Um, and like I said, the goal, of course, is for them to not need this. So if I notice that after dramatic play, the student you know, cleans up dramatic play and moves to another center and is engaged without the plan, fine, not better than fine, hooray! That's what we want. This is for the kids who can't, who can't engage, you know what I mean, who have a hard time with that transition from one center to another or from picking a center. So if they're doing that on their own, I'm like, oh, it worked, right? We don't need, we don't need to get this out if you can do it on your own. Okay, so I just have this like bag of choices. Like I said, I try to put a couple on the back, you know, think, um, ones that I think would be good, and then they just make their plan, and anytime they're like, I don't know what to do, I'll just run around the room. <laughs> then I'll get out the plan, let's see what the plan is. Okay, I'm gonna show you two more here at the table, and I'm actually gonna walk you around the room to show you a couple more. Um, I shared this one, I've shared this one in other videos that when I'm reading a story or when we're doing circle time lessons, sometimes I have kids who just like, they're squirrely on the carpet, you know, they're like rolling around, looking at the sky, kicking or doing whatever. And so I just hold this little card up, you know, with this is what you're supposed to look like because we're on the carpet. And on the back it has, you know, your eyes are looking, your ears are listening, mouth, hands, you know, I just do this. Um, at the beginning of the year a lot, can you look like this while I read the story? And then I have it right next to my circle time carpet. So if a kid is starting to, you know, act squirrely or I don't know, however you want to say it, then I'll just like hold this <laughs> or I'll point to it, you know, and that really, um, that really helps. Like, oh, that's right. This is what I'm supposed to look like while Miss Jamie reads a story. Um, so this is really good. But then I also have, um, I also have it on a smaller card, and with these, I just have a couple of different, <laughs> a couple of different pictures, and I can just like hand it to the kids. So if it's like quiet time, like we're supposed to be sitting and listening, I can just put this in front of them, just a reminder. Shh, you know, it's quiet time. Just just a really easy visual for students who have a hard time remembering when I say, oh, it's quiet time. You know, we're gonna sit and listen, or you know, whatever. And then two minutes later, they're like whoop, 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 talking, telling me a story about what they ate for breakfast. And I just have to be like, remember, quiet time. Um, and so I just have these sort of on a little um, loop so I can just hand it to the student. You know, I find the one that I need and I just hand it to them just to hold on their lap. Oh, you're not supposed to be kicking on the carpet right now or laying down or rolling around. You're supposed to be sitting crisscross. You know? <laughs> um, so I just have them, you know, on a little, a little card. Uh, lots of different options, you know, if, the kid is still sitting there, the day's over, we've sang goodbye. I'm like, oh, no, it's time to go home. Let's go put on our backpack. Uh, because students, especially students who have diagnosed special needs and students who you might suspect have special needs, the visual cue is so good because they might, you know, their brain might be thinking about other things and the teacher's saying it's time to go home, but their brain is thinking, I really didn't like snack today, I'm hungry, I wish there was something else to eat. And they're not listening to what you're saying. And it's not that they're being naughty, it's just that they're having, their brain is like, you know, thinking about something else while you're talking. So when you double that up, it's time to go home with a visual, it's like snaps their brain into like, oh, I hear her saying it's time to go home. I see a picture of the kid who's getting ready to walk out the door. Ah, it must be time to go home. So anytime you can combine your, your, you know, your verbal directions with a visual picture, that's always really good for kids. Sometimes, and again, this is not for every kid, not for every day, not for every situation. It's really just us as teachers problem solving when we've got a part of our day that is not working well, or when we've got a student, you know, that I'm like, oh, he could do better with that. I have a student um, who comes in in the morning, it's at the beginning of the year, right? And just like throws his backpack on the ground. I'm like, well, that's not how we do it. You know, the first week of school I modeled for you, you know, we come in, we find our locker, we hang up our backpack, we take off our shoes. And still, he would just like come in and like, toss his backpack on the ground. And so I just made him a card. Like, oh, when you're ready for school, 
First you say, hello, Miss Jamie. And then you hang up your backpack. Here at our school, we take off our shoes and then you can go over to the carpet with your friends. And so um, this was just made out of necessity. Honestly, it was just like the kid, you know, we've modeled it. The rest of the class, 90% of the class is, is doing exactly as we practiced. And I still have the one kid who's just struggling with that morning routine. He comes in, there's so many great things set up, and he just like, I just wanna get right to playing. So I'm just gonna throw my backpack on the floor and run off, you know, and start playing. And so this little visual um, is just really helpful for him. I have it, uh, I'll show you when we walk around the room, but I just have it clipped right to my door. So he walks in and I'm like, oh, good morning. Say hi to Miss Jamie, hang up your backpack, take off your shoes, and then we can, you know, and Actually, last week, so the student comes Thursdays and Fridays. Last week, I used it on Thursday. Friday, this is how you know when you're doing so, something right. He walks in, he goes, hi, and walked right over to the lockers with his backpack. I didn't even pull the card out. He hung his backpack up and then sat for me to help him with his shoes. And I thought, you know what? We worked ourselves out of needing this card. And that's exactly the goal. The goal is to get the kids to do it. This is like a stepping stone, right? To get them to do it independently. So I don't think we're gonna need this one anymore. Um, the last thing I guess I was gonna show you is, so we do have a couple of students with pretty severe special needs every year, but this year especially. And so these little flip cards that I have on the carpet for them to hold or you know, whenever they're sitting someplace, I also have on a string <laughs> for me. <laughs> so you know, if we're outside and we're playing and it's time, or you know, they're being too rough, with the ball or whatever, then I'll just flip to the card, use gentle hands, and I'm out there playing with them and you know hitting or whatever, I'm like, oh, remember, gentle hands. And so I use, um, we use these cards, you know, it looks so silly, right? As teachers, we'll do anything. So I just wear mine. <laughs> oh, it's time to sit and eat at the table. Or um, we have to be kind to our friends. I'll just wear my little be kind. <laughs> I'm sure my neighbors are like, that lady is crazy. Um, but we have one on a string as well as the one for the kids to kind of hold on to. So the thing about being a teacher, of course, you have to be flexible, right? Like sometimes you're outside and you need a visual, so I just take it to go. Um, you have to do what works best for your students. And the last one I'm gonna show you before I take you on a little um, tour around the room is sometimes we have students, especially students who lack in some verbal skills, who like have a student and all he wants to do is go outside to play. So he comes in in the morning, we kind of get started, and then he's like banging on the door. I wanna go out, I wanna go out, I wanna go out and play. And, or maybe they want to eat right away and it's not time to eat or they want, I don't know what, you know, whatever it is that they want, you have to do something else first. So what we made is this little um, first, then uh, folder, which is really common. I mean, I know all special ed teachers have this, um, but it's just inside a, uh, a manila folder. It's just two squares that say first, then. So I know you wanna go outside, right? I know, I can tell you're banging on the door. Um, but first we have to clean up our toys. So first we clean up and then we can go outside to play. And on the back of it, again, it's just that same, just pieces of Velcro. And so, um, you know, we can just change it as necessary. And again, I would only use this if a kid is really like demanding to do something and it's not time for that yet. So let's say the kid really wants to eat snack. He's like, I'm hungry at snack, I want snack, I want snack, go into the refrigerator, or sitting in a snack chair. And I'll say, I know you want snack, but first we have to go to the bathroom and then you can have snack. And so this is like a simpler way of doing like a plan chart or a, you know, a daily schedule, right? So if this is too much, so for some kids, this is gonna be too much, right? You're like, oh, it's like 10 things. All I want is snack. <laughs> then this is a step back from that. Well, after you go to the bathroom, then we can eat our snack. So this is like a step, you know, like a step easier than trying to figure out all 10 things. Okay, so um, I do look a little crazy. <laughs> you say I don't look crazy, but I do. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I've got like the, the apron and the, the lanyard with the different flip cards. I think people are like, <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna take you and just show you how we have some of the other visuals around our room so that we can grab them as necessary and so they're really handy for us. Okay, now you know I don't do very well with this one. Gemma's not here, so I'll flip the camera around and sort of narrate for you um, how, we have them, how we have them set up.
If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I can read them easier when I'm flipped around. And also, if you have other parts of your day that you're struggling with, let me know because I do have these ready to upload for you guys. Um, but I wanted to get your feedback first to see if there's anything I've missed, you know, that's, that I haven't thought of. And I'll add that in before I upload it this afternoon. So, okay, so here it goes. Let me see if I can. All right, so um, this is what I was telling you. Ooh. Well, now, hold on one second. Oh, the camera is still backwards. Okay, so this is what I was telling you. Like, I just have this, you know, getting ready for school um, thing clipped right to our, you know, right to the door. So when they come in, I can just say, you know, grab the, the chart. And then, of course, that's the, hello camera. That's the schedule. And I would just put, I would just, oh, sorry, I get the whole tour of my room all crazy like this, huh? I wonder. Let's see if I can do this. And I would just put this, you know, the star on like that. So first it's morning work and then we move to circle time. Um, over at our circle time easel, I have, you know, the, I can sit during circle time right there and then I just hang it on this little hook. It's not hung up because I used it today, but I have this like, this little hook right here, and so I'll just hang it up there easily for me to use. And then you get a little tour of my bathroom here. Um, but here in the bathroom, you know, I have the, I can go to the bathroom sign, because we do have kids who are not quite potty trained, so let me see if I can show it to you. Um, I'm not very good with it when I have to do the camera and the talking. So, um, you know, on the back of the I can go to the bathroom one, it just says, um, you know, this is so silly, but, um, you know, I have to pull down my pants, sit on the potty, wipe my bottom, pull up my pants, flush the toilet. And I know it's not glamorous, but, um, you know, if you have kids who are learning to use the toilet, then this is a really good one. And we also, for some of our kids who are still potty training, I just have this like little potty chart and you can make your own but they sit on the potty they get a little star if they go to the potty they get a big star and then at the end if they wash their hands and I just put stickers because um, some kids just need the visual <laughs> all right let me show you a couple more and then we'll answer some questions okay sorry there's my shower hold on one second okay hold on Okay, <laughs> goodness, you guys. Uh, you're so patient with me. There I am in the in the thing, but um, I have another one for I can wash my hands. So, you know, on the back, it just says, you know, turn on the water, get the soap, rub your hands together, turn off the water and dry them with a paper towel. So it's just really trying to help them plan out, you know, what they need to do. Um, I have a little one because I've got a student who's a thrower. He throws a lot of the stuff out of the sensory table. So I just made one here um, that says, you know, I can play at the sensory table. And then if they start throwing stuff, then we just flip it around or I pull it off. You know, and just say the rules of the sensory table are you have to keep it in the table, don't eat it, don't throw it, and sweep it up. So we have those in a couple of different places. I'm trying to think. I've got one like in the block center. So the same thing, um, just take what you need, think and build, don't throw it, and then clean up. So, so those are just like some of the things that we've had to make. Okay, so those are just some of, some of the visual cues that we've had to make to try to, to support our students. Sorry, I took my thing out of the, whoo, took my thing out of the tripod so I could show you. Those are just some of the things that we've made in our own classroom to try to support students who need that extra visual cue. So I guess my, in summary, what I mean to say is, think about what is not working well for you with your students and figure out a way that you can use visuals. If it's taking a photograph of what it's supposed to look like in your classroom, if it's really like lining up or delineating you know like the exact steps of what they need to do if it's doing that first or next if it's making you know the the schedule whatever's not working figure out a way to support that student with 
visual cues. So that is my strategy for today. <laughs> it's been a bit of a process this year. Like I said, I've had sort of a hodgepodge of visual cues over the years and, um, and of course the clip art is so much better, right? In 2017 than it was 10 or 12 years ago. But really this year it's been, because I have students with some pretty significant needs, um, I've just really had to say, you know, this part of our day isn't working. And we, ch we focus on one thing at a time, use that visual, teach the visual. And like I said, the goal is um, that they wouldn't need it after a while, so. Um, they are not in my store yet. They're all ready, everything is done. Um, and if you have anything else that's not working for your day, I'd love for you to leave them in the comments. So before I upload it, I'll try to make sure that I've included as many different things. It's impossible to do every, right, every problem that will come up in your preschool classroom, but I will try to include as many different scenarios um, so that it's helpful for you. Yes, Danielle, and my kids go home, um, not after lunch, they go home before lunch. Yeah. Alrighty, thank you so much for joining me, you guys. Uh, we have chip clips for you tomorrow. <laughs> so um, my fingers are still crossed that you're not sick of them, but uh, we have some more amazing chip clip poems. Not mine, some people have been sending them to me. You guys are so creative, so generous. So I'm gonna share some more chip clips with you tomorrow, and I believe Jebel will be here as well. Um, staying seated at mealtime. Brianna, listen, that is such a that is such a tough one for us too. I've got kids who really have a hard time, which is why I made this one. You have to sit and eat, and then as soon as they're done, you know, then we say, would you like to be excused, and then you can go play. But as long as it's sitting and eating time, I'll have this out on the table for them. So, all right. I will send a text reminder out before we go live tomorrow. So if you haven't signed up for that, I'll go back and leave a link. And um, it should be about 12.30ish Eastern time, but you know, sometimes we like to have lunch first. So <laughs> thank you for joining me. I really appreciate you guys and I will look forward to all of your input and ideas before I upload uh, the visual cues for you. Have a great afternoon, have fun playing and learning with your kids and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.